Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us today for WordStream and Google's joint webinar, Google Enhanced Campaigns, Four Use Cases for SMB Advertisers. My name is Chris, and I'll be your moderator for today's presentation. So for today's agenda, we're going to be covering Enhanced Campaign Product Overview. We're going to walk you through offer extensions, upgraded site links, and app extensions. And we're also going to cover a case study which is four takeaways from upgrading accounts to enhanced campaigns. If you'd like to take part in live blogging for today's webinar, you can include the hashtag pound wordstream in your Google Plus status, updates, Twitter tweets, etc. Now to introduce our speakers for today's presentation, we have on the call Larry Kim. Larry is the founder and CTO of Wordstream. He's been doing PPC and SEO for 10 years, and today WordStream is the industry-leading provider of PPC management platform and keyword research tools. We also have on the webinar today from Google, Cher Khan. Cher is a strategic partner manager at Google. Hi, guys. Uh, great to be back on the panel. Thanks for calling us back, Larry and Chris. Um, I'm a strategic partner manager based out of the New York Google office, uh, working for our channel sales partnership team. Um, been with Google for coming up to five years now, uh, and been working with WordStream uh, for coming up to a year now. Um, we also have on the webinar today from Google, Ruthika Sharon. Ruthika is an account strategist at Google. All right, guys, uh, this is Larry here. So I thought before jumping into all the enhanced campaign stuff, we could just ask a couple poll questions for the audience, get a sense for who's uh, on the line. Uh, my first question uh, for the audience is, uh, have you actually upgraded one or more of your active campaigns uh, to enhance campaigns. And uh, if you could just uh, look at the poll question on your right-hand side there and then answer like yes if you've, if you've done some, one or more upgrading of one of your campaigns or not yet if you're just holding off or haven't gotten around to it yet, please. So how are we doing with our poll here, Chris? Uh, looks like about 70% of people voted so far. Okay, I think that's good enough. Let's see what the results, what, what does our audience say? Uh, I can't quite see that. Uh, can you tell me what it says, uh, Chris? Sure, so it looks like 55% of people have upgraded to enhanced campaigns and about 45% of the people on the line um, have not. Wow, so we've got some real overachievers here uh, in terms of uh, eager beavers. Because uh, I know that, like in in the wild, uh, it's it's much lower percentages uh, than that. Uh, I have just one other question for the audience today, uh, and that is um, has to do with uh, what do you ma value more for your particular business? Do you value clicks from mobile mobile devices uh, or clicks from uh, desktops slash notebooks? Uh, and, and there's a couple of different options here. Like a, I value the desktop tablets more. I value the clicks from mobile mobile devices more. I value them the same, or I have no opinion. Like if you could just uh, kind of give me a sense for uh, what do you value more for your particular business? Uh, and lock in your votes, please. How are we doing there, Chris? Uh, looks like we got about 75% of the, the people voted. So let me launch this here. And it looks like 51% value desktop over tablet clicks more. 5% value mobile clicks more, 38% value them the same, and 7% have no opinion. Isn't that interesting? So by a 10 to 1 margin almost, people seem to value the desktops over the, the, the mobile. Well, um, that seems to be a, a pretty common um, belief, but we'll, we'll uh, see if we can uh, maybe uh, change any opinions by the end of this webinar share. <laughs> All right. Let's try our best. All right, so I'm going to hand things over to you, uh, Cher, uh, and uh, take it away. Thanks, Larry. Great. So um, enhanced campaigns, a very hot topic at the moment. Uh, I'm going to start by adding context to enhanced campaigns and uh, by highlighting consumer insights and the evolving digital landscape. Everything we do at Google is driven by people's behavior, needs, and wants. AdWords is no exception, and we've been very successful for quite a while now with AdWords because it delivers ads that work for those who receive them. We want to keep things that way so to understand the background of why we're introducing enhanced campaigns. First, we must start with changing the, the changing digital landscape and how people are using technology in an increasingly multi-device world. 
We connect at any time from anywhere using a variety of devices. Inherently, people are the same as they've ever been. It's the backdrop, the world that we live in that has changed so drastically. Because of technology, we now live in what Larry Page, our CEO, likes to call the world of abundance. Abundant information and abundant computing. Technology has enabled content proliferation and constant connectivity, which means it has both addressed and amplified our core human needs. In other words, technology has made our desire for information, for answers, confidence, connected connectedness ever more acute. More than that, we rely on technology to help us learn, connect, and do things. We expect it at our service. And what's really driving the shift in behavior and expectations? Well, Larry alluded to it two minutes ago. It's our devices, our multi-screen reality. We live in a constantly connected world where most of us carry at least one device all the time, every day, and we use our devices interchangeably, depending on our situation, seamlessly transitioning between them. There are many consumer trends to consider when figuring out how to adapt to this new multi-device world. Devices are evolving quickly with a growing list of form factors and capabilities, and marketers need more powerful tools to reach their audiences in a multi-device world. People are constantly switching between devices, using one that works best for wherever they happen to be and whatever they're trying to do. Marketers need a simple way to promote the right messages to the right people based on user context and device capabilities. Device evolution and changes in consumer behavior present new ways to measure advertising effectiveness. And marketers need, to, need new measurement tools to understand the impact of their advertising to drive results. Developing an advertising strategy that makes these takes these trends into account makes it possible to be relevant everywhere across situations. We're launching enhanced campaigns in AdWords to make advertising across devices smarter, more powerful, and more measurable. We've added new functionality to AdWords to make it easier to be relevant to people's context as well as their intent, location, device, and time. There are new ways to customize campaigns by these contextual cues, ad formats, and functionality, bidding tools, and measurement methods. This means more relevance to people's intent and their context at exactly the moments that matter. Moving on to the Enhanced Campaigns product overview. There are three areas of improvements inherent within Enhanced Campaigns depicted on this slide. Powerful marketing tools for the multi-device world, the ability to manage your bids across devices, locations, and time, for example, bidding higher for customers on mobile or who are within half a mile of your store. Why would you want to do this? Because their clicks are more valuable for your business. Smarter ads optimized for varying user context. The ability to show the right creative site link, app, or extension based on user context and device capabilities. For example, show store locator for consumers on mobile during business hours. Why? because their clicks are more valuable to your business. Advanced reports. To measure new conversion types, the ability to track new conversion types such as calls and digital downloads. For example, consider calls over three minutes as a conversion because you know that's the time it takes for you to make a sale or get details. Why? Because the better you can track your business, the more chances you have to optimize. Now let's look at each of these three in turn in a little more detail. Powerful tools for the multi-device world. A bid adjustment represents a percentage change in your bids. For example, you can increase or decrease every bid in your enhanced campaign to bid more or less competitively for mobile devices. In addition to mobile devices, you can set campaign level bid adjustments for times, days, and locations. You can adjust your bids for specific postal codes, cities, and other geographic areas, or use location extension targeting to set different bids for customers who are located around your business. Bid adjustments and reporting by, for example, location. Optimize bids for different locations, such as within Boston, near specific places or within half a mile of Joe's Coffee House. Time, 
bit higher when your business is open, for example, between 6 and 11 a.m. for breakfast, and device, bid for users who are, on the mobile de who are on mobile devices to optimize ROI. Multiple bid adjustments customize bidding strategies to optimize for any combination like geo, device, or time, and location. Smarter ads for varying consumer contexts. Customized messages on mobile. For example, location. Optimize bids for different locations such as New York City, Boston, or Washington, and near specific places. For example, within half a mile of a specific location. Scheduled extensions. Set extensions to appear only during certain times of day, whenever your office or store is open. Or enhanced site links. Manage individual site links in customized ways and campaign at campaign and now also at ad group level. Advanced reports to measure new conversion types. Advanced reports is one of the most exciting new features within enhanced campaigns and allows you to, gives you the ability to track new conversion types such as calls and digital downloads as just mentioned. It may also include soon uh, the ability to measure in-store purchases and cross-device conversions. In summary, four key changes from enhanced campaigns Number one, campaigns will run across all devices. Enhanced campaigns will run across mobile, tablet, and desktop devices. And mobile ads require special bids, extensions, ad texts, and headlines. And these can all be managed from the same campaign, making it easier to manage your campaigns. Mobile bids will be adjusted at the, at the campaign level and soon at the ad group level. Bids can be set at specific keyword levels but the mobile bid adjustment applies uniformly to all the keyword bids in the campaign and soon at the ad group level. Tablet bidding strategies will be aligned with desktop. Tablets and laptops, lap device, tablets and laptop devices are rapidly converging and research shows behavior is similar. With enhanced campaigns, tablets do not have a separate bid adjustment independent of default desktop and laptop bids. Your ads will automatically show on desktop and laptops. And fourth, mobile bids fully controlled by advertisers. Google historically adjusted bids automatically for mobile when a campaign tar targets multiple devices. With mobile bid adjustment, advertisers will have full control of mobile bids and Google will stop manually adjusting bids. Reaching your customers with fewer campaigns, making it easier for the marketer. And with enhanced campaigns, you no longer need to be able to split campaigns to modify bids and ads for location or mobile targeting campaigns. The streamlined campaign management enables you to focus on contextual strategy and not implementation. As you can see in the above example, where you previously have required 50 odd campaigns with 50 locations with verifying bids, you can now do everything in one campaign. Similarly, if you have two day parts for different stores or separate mobile or desktop campaigns, this can now all be combined into one, making it much easier to manage going forward. Hopefully this has provided you with an overview of what Enhanced Campaigns is, why we are making these changes, as well as what the key changes actually are. With this, I'll be handing over to Rutika, who will talk about different types of extensions that Enhanced Campaigns enables. Hi everyone, I'm Rutika and uh, I've been with Google for over three years now and I'm an account strategist with uh, the channel partners uh, partnerships team along with Share. Uh, in this section I'll be talking to you all about offer extensions and how they're even more relevant today considering the changing consumer landscape. Moving on to the next slide, consumers have been shopping for products and looking, they're always looking for offers anytime from anywhere and across devices as you will see, see on this slide. Uh, enhanced Campaigns has given us the perfect platform to capture this opportunity. Moving on to the next slide, meet Linda. So Linda is a busy woman balancing her career and her family and taking on a large part of managing the household finances. And she manages her busy life with the help of digital technology, which allows her to be connected and informed at all the time. Like most of her friends and colleagues, Linda owns several devices, which she uses throughout the day, her phone while on the go, and her tablet and her laptop at home. 
And living in a constantly connected multi-device world has changed some of her everyday behaviors and expectations, especially related to shopping. According to a recent for a Forrester study, 84% of U.S. adults are online daily, and consumers are also more likely to use their mobile phones in stores than anywhere else outside of the home, and more in the store than their own kitchen. Let me give you a little more context in the next slide. Uh, so when we're talking about new behaviors of the connected consumer, what are we talking about? Let me start with what's top of mind for Linda, who is the consumer that we're talking about here, and what's most important to her. Linda is constantly evaluating options and looking to snag the best deal, right? And today, she has more powerful tools than ever before at her disposal for efficient deal hunting if she needs to look for something. However, getting a good deal isn't really just about the discount. Um, also, moving on to what hooks her emotionally uh, and not just cognitively, Linda is a social shopper who places a lot of value in what her friends think. So increasingly, the actions and opinions of her friends are big factors that move items off Linda's wish list and into her shopping cart. Um, Linda is also fully equipped with a phone a tablet and a laptop and is coming to expect a seamless experience across the platform, something that Shane and Larry also spoke about on the previous slide. And all of these devices are used throughout the day and the information she gathers on these devices are crucial in driving her to her ultimate purchases. Uh, finally, Linda is always on the move and therefore dependent on her phone, phone to stay connected. She expects relevant information at her fingertips at all times and the messages she receives in the right context are the ones that really stick with her and drive her to take action. As she's always on the go, she also needs an easy way to keep, to keep track of the messages that she's receiving from merchants and stores and also a way to organize any coupons or promotions that she receives. So let's talk about the shopping cycle briefly, which is the path that a consumer takes from the beginning to end to make a purchase. Uh, it starts with the browsing phase, which is where uh, it's all about the awareness and the interest, less about intent. So the shopping phase, which is more about consideration and research, more about intent. And finally, the purchase stage, which is the stage when a consumer shows the most commitment, the strongest commitment, and strongest intent. Right? So when our shopping cycle used to be simple and used to move in a linear fashion, but in today's world, the shopping cycle has gotten increasingly complex and fast moving as she can browse, shop, and purchase at any time from anywhere in her house while she's out of the box and from any device. Okay. Um, increasingly, the path to purchase crosses both online and offline. For example, in a typical weekend, if, if I was to give you an example, she starts her shopping journey by using her laptop at home to browse for information about juicers. She then decides to go to the store to get a first-hand look at all the different models that are available. While at the store, she pulls out her phone to look at reviews and compare prices. And finding a promotion for a 10% off her entire purchase at the store location, she makes the decision to purchase the juicer as well as a few new glasses. So as you can see, it's now more important than ever for retailers and businesses, small as well as larger ones, to have a multi-channel approach to reach Linda wherever she is. To illustrate the power of Google, let's take a look at a day in the life of Linda to see how offers can reach her throughout the day wherever she is and inspire her to take action. As you'll see in the slide in front of you, at 6 a.m., you assume that Linda would be at home drinking coffee, looking at the news on her tablet, and she sees an offer on the Google Display Network. At 8 a.m. on a subway looking at a Google Plus brand site on the phone and she sees an offer from a department store with the latest sales. At 10 a.m. she is at work on a desktop searching for juicers on Google and she sees an offer tag on a search ad. Uh, at 1 p.m. on the street looking at maps for a nearby restaurant, she sees an offer for a Mexican restaurant close by. And then again, the cycle moves on in the same manner. So this brings us to the more important discussion of how do we reach out to a potential customer now that we know their behavior? And how is, and how has Enhanced Campaign really made it easier for us to reach that customer? We want to reach Linda wherever she is with offers and things she needs and wants throughout the day. Okay? So how do we do that? So take a look at this example on the next slide. Uh, Jake is 
a businessman and he owns a burger shop and he wants to reach consumers at the precise moment when it matters. And his uh, need is that he wants to drive in-store traffic and conversion. So what he does is he uses AdWords to create offer extensions. As you see in the slide in front of you, once this is done, that is based on a user's um, search query, the offer extensions would show up on Google search uh, on ads on phones in top position. As you see, Jake has created an offer description that says save $2 when you visit and spend over $10. So let's say Linda feels like eating burgers for lunch today, so she types in burger in her Google search bar and see this, uh, she sees this ad which interests her. She clicks on Get Offer, which then allows her to now um, to use it now or to save it to her Google Offers account. And if she saw it on her desktop, then she also has the option of printing this offer. Now, offers can be redeemed right away on phones, or consumers can get reminders via email or via a real-time phone reminder when they are near the store location. And it would also um, I would also, they would also be given automatic reminders when the offers are close to expiring. And Linda can then use the barcode on the mobile device to redeem the offer in the store. So if Jake, the business owner, wants to know how his offer extensions are, uh, are performing, we provide reporting around impressions, the number of sales, and also the number of reminders that uh, a business is getting is another metric that will be coming soon. On the next slide, um, so how does this really help Jay? Basically, he's able to reach the right customer at the right time on phones, tablets, and computers. So he's able to target his audience in a multi-device world, and he's able to bring people searching online into your offline stores. Now we'll move briefly, and uh, we'll touch briefly upon another type of extension that Jay can use. Uh, being the owner of this burger shop. This is called the app extension. And so what if Jake Pizza Shop had a mobile app? Okay. So he can use app extensions to give users like Linda the option to visit the app store or your mobile site. So what you see in front of you shows Jake's app, app extension with a four and a half star rating for this app. And if a user clicks on this, they are then taken to the Play Store where they can install the app. As you know, app marketplaces are crowded with many, many apps to choose from. And mobile search and display are the most ideal channels for advertisers to promote their apps and drive the downloads as well. While you'd use mobile display campaigns to reach the scale that you'd want to in terms of the amount of downloads you'd like if you do have an app, Mobile search campaigns will help you reach out to those expecting an interest to download your app. Uh, with enhanced campaigns, driving download, downloads of apps has become much easier for people like Jake. We now have an app template that makes it easier to create these apps. This template also pulls in information like the app icon, the pricing, and so on from the store. Therefore, it becomes very easy for someone like Jake to create the app. Apart from this, the ads are now automatically served to the relevant devices. All of this makes the experience much better as compared to the quick to download ads we had earlier on. The last section we'll be focusing on today is the upgraded sitelinks feature that we're pretty excited about. As the sitelinks tend to have a much higher click-through rate than those without, and sometimes they even have a much higher click-through rate which goes up to about 30% more than the ads without. So let us look at what is improved on this front. In terms of creation, Enhanced Campaigns allows us a much more granular optimization of sitelinks as they can be set at the campaign level as well as the ad group level. Previously, this was possible only at the campaign level. The second benefit is the approval side of things. Previously, when one sitelink was disapproved, all in that cluster were disapproved. Now there's a per link approval process, which makes it easier for an advertiser. The third change is in terms of editing. Any changes used to mean uh, all performance history is reset to uh, zero. Now we can edit inline and retain the performance history. So a change again in terms of editing. The reporting piece is the most interesting. 
we now offer per link performance data versus the performance data per cluster that we used to offer before. This allows, obviously, for a better optimization of assets. The last change is with regard to mobile. We did not have any specific functionality with the old legacy campaign, but now we can set mobile preferred cycling functionality, which means that you can create mobile specific cycling extensions that cater specifically to your mobile audience. With that, I'll now hand it over back to Larry. Awesome. Thanks, Arithika, uh, for that awesome overview of, of the different site links and features and functions uh, that are available in Enhanced Campaigns. And thanks, uh, Cher, for uh, that overview of Enhanced Campaigns overall. Uh, so in my bit of the uh, presentation today, I, I thought uh, I wasn't going to just focus on, on kind of the stuff that you can read online. Uh, instead, I wanted to focus on um, sort of uh, just four takeaways that I've learned uh, myself from having upgraded roughly uh, about a hundred of our thousand small business uh, clients uh, in the last couple months, and so uh, so so that's the plan we talked about today. Um, and so my first uh, case study is this major provider of, of vehicle parts, and so they sell to the USA and Canada to garages and individuals, uh, primarily through their online store, but also via phone calls, and so. Uh, when I first kind of talked to the client about the idea of working with the client on uh, maybe upgrading some of his accounts to enhance campaigns and implementing a really sophisticated mobile strategy, it was, it was a little he was a little bit disinterested in the idea, and that was uh, that was interesting. And the reason was because uh, he, he was disinterested in this was because he looked into his account uh, on a typical day and saw that mobile accounted for just 17% of the conversions, uh, and that the cost for the conversions from these mobile uh, you know, conversions was uh, roughly 50% higher uh, than uh, the cost for, for the conversions for, for the desktop. But you see, there might be more going on here, and so I explained to the client that maybe some of these numbers that might be misleading, and maybe that, you know, there's calls that are happening that aren't, you know, that are generating conversions and, 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 and business that's not necessarily reflected in some of these uh, numbers. And so maybe some of the cost per action numbers might be overstated, and so so we agreed to just give it a, a try on a couple uh, uh, upgrading to enhance campaigns and implementing a mobile strategy on a, on a handful of campaigns. So let's see what happened. So uh, this brings me to the first of my four findings today, uh, which is for a variety of reasons, uh, I'm finding that the majority of small and medium sized businesses are a little bit skeptical on the value of mobile search, even though there's evidence to suggest that the opposite could be true. Uh, so, so uh, for example, this, this screenshot is from a, a previous, my previous webinar, uh, which was held on March 21st, and I asked about 200 uh, attendees the same question that I asked today, uh, which was, you know, what do you value more for your business, the clicks from the mobile or clicks from the tablets and desktops? And again, by a 10 to 1 margin, it was the same result today. Uh, people valued the clicks from, they, they, they said they valued the, the desktop clicks more than the mobile. Uh, and I think that the reason, one of the reasons why mobile gets kind of a bad rap is uh, because some of the challenges with measuring the return on investment on, uh, on some of these calls that are being generated through, through mobile search. So let's continue here. Back to our story. Uh, so I upgraded uh, two of the guys' campaigns using the standard best practices that the chair and, and uh, Haritika were talking about, uh, you know, having uh, call extensions and mobile ad scheduling. Uh, basically, our whole our whole plan here was to try to get a sense for the value of calls from mobile devices for this particular business. And so, you know, we, uh, you know, there was this ad, uh, call tracking in AdWords. That, uh, that's a nice feature that we used, but it only shows the number of calls. It doesn't necessarily show the, kind of the outcomes of of the calls, so like what happened after someone called that number. And so we employed a very low-tech setup. Uh, this is nothing that's very sophisticated, just to give you an idea of how simple it could be. Uh, basically, it's a big warehouse of auto parts, and so the company had three incoming lines, line one, line two, and line three. And so we designated line three as the Google phone line. And so we set up the call to just go directly from AdWords uh, to the Google phone, but what we, we called it. And so we, then they, they instructed uh, people to, you know, if you're answering the Google phone, uh, you know, can you write down what ended up happening happening from those calls over a period of two weeks? Uh, which brings me to my second key takeaway for the day here, which is uh, that there was a huge gap in terms of the perception and the reality for mobile 
uh, for this particular client. It was completely backwards. A call uh, to this guy's business converts to a sale at nearly four times higher a rate than a click to his website. Four times higher. Uh, and, and so uh, additionally, the client was undercounting the number of mobile conversions by about half. And this was due to difficulties in attributing the, the conversions from the calls. And so, uh, you know, like if, if someone calls you directly from, from, your, from, the, from the ad, well, then that means that they're not going to fill out the, 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 the contact us form on your website, which and, and triggering that the, kind of the conversion pixel on, on your website, because like you, you bypass that. So that there, there was all this value that wasn't being kind of properly attributed, properly measured. And so this enhanced campaigns experiment had a profound uh, impact, even though it was a very simple experiment, it had a very profound impact on the business, uh, you know, to the point where, you know, it's, it's impacting the business in terms of how they think about, uh, you know, taking orders via the phone. Uh, and um, as a result, uh, you know, the customer, like, the customer's really excited about this. So, so that was a, a pretty, pretty profound uh, use case here. Um, my next case study is a national talent agency. So this is like a big database of like, I want to say kind of like aspiring talent, like maybe maybe not Tom Cruise kind of level, but it, maybe you want to be in a flyer or an extra in a movie or, or um, you know, kind of smaller gigs. Uh, this, this agency uh, has a big database of talent and they charge you a, a small monthly listing fee uh, to, uh, to, to be in their database and to have uh, professional uh, agents represent you for like smaller gigs. And so, uh, you know, they sell online, uh, this, they have a call center, they also have a dozen or so offices in different cities across the, uh, the U.S. Where, where they do walk-ins and, and you can get your pictures taken and stuff like that. And so this advertiser is a little bit further along. Uh, in their mobile search kind of enlightenment compared to that last use case of the vehicle guy who, who w wasn't really uh, implementing a, a mobile strategy before. So this, this particular advertiser is further along. They have a mobile strategy in place. Uh, they were already sold on the value of mobile because you know, they, they would be able to schedule a lot of walk-ins and, and get a lot of deals through mobile, and they thought that was very, very effective. Uh, so then you might, be, um, you might be thinking, like, so if they're already you know, dedicated, they already had dedicated mobile campaigns and they already were using all these nice call extensions that Haruthika was talking about, uh, then, then what's, the, uh, what's the upside for this client? And then uh, it brings me to my key learning number three for the presentation, which is to not forget to upgrade when you upgrade to enhance campaigns. So the whole upgrade wizard in AdWords it only takes one second to, to like walk through the, to the, uh, through the upgrade wizard. But, the whole point of upgrading is not just clicking that button. It's it's uh, you know it's more of the big win and the big benefit for this client comes from all the simplifications and all the additional features and functions that you can take advantage of as a result of having upgraded to enhance campaigns. And so, uh, just to give you a couple examples, uh, we consolidated roughly a hundred campaigns. So he had a, a dedicated mobile and, and desktop campaigns. So we consolidated that hundred into fifty. So that's a, a significantly more manageable number uh, to to um, to manage. And so you know how it is when you're managing your AdWords accounts. When you have like you know 50, 100, or 200 campaigns, your 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 campaigns sort of build up this inertia where it's like kind of like quicksand or like cement because the, the bigger it gets, the harder it is to ma manage and maintain. And so you know any time when you have an opportunity to cut down the number of campaigns by 50% and to get the same or better results. Uh, I think that's that's a really a really uh, a win for for campaign management because like there's your time is not free. You have, you have to you have to consider the the you know all the overhead in terms of the the, the time taken to, to do simple tasks. And so uh, there there was more than just the campaign simplification. The client also had some research data into recent purchases and demographics data that said that the company did better on like evenings and weekends. It did better in certain neighborhoods and with certain younger demographics. Um, so this data was because they were running other other ad campaigns like um, like ads on the train or on the buses and stuff like this. And so we weren't able to use that data in the paid search campaigns, but now with enhanced campaigns and using these new bid options that the chair was talking about, that we were able to do like uh, incorporate all this this uh, kind of customer data into the bid strategy. So that was pretty exciting. Um, and and. So, so it's a combination of modest uh, improvements in campaign performance and huge improvements in, in campaign management uh, complexity reduction. 
Uh, so, um, <clears throat> so my last case study today uh, to share with you today has to do with a Windows desktop software vendor. So this company sells web programming tools to programmers. It's kind of like Adobe Dreamweaver or something like it's like a Windows desktop program. It only works on PCs on Windows. They sell 100% of their business through an online store. There's a free seven-day download at after which time you have to kind of pay for a, a software license. Now, uh, previously, a, a, a few years ago, they had excluded mobile and tablet traffic from their, their campaigns. And, um, and so that made sense because you know, their software doesn't work on mobile or tablet. Uh, and so they're a little bit upset about kind of some of the changes uh, that are in enhanced campaigns because you know when they excluded mobile and, and, and tablet traffic from their campaigns uh, a few years ago, the performance improved. And so um, maybe they're a little upset about having to give up some of those games because the tablet's been lumped together with the, with the, the desktop. Uh, so the customer was a little concerned. They wrote a letter to one of our Google partner reps, and here's kind of the response that we got from Google. Uh, basically, uh, the, the highlights here are is that they they agreed that the inability to separate tablets is a valid concern for this particular business. That doesn't mean it's it's uh, the case for for all the businesses. Uh, and the other recommendation was just just hold off on um, on upgrading uh, just for now. Uh, maybe uh, maybe Google was working on something. Who knows? Um, so, which brings me to my last observation for my talk today. Uh, which is there are some clients that are a little bit upset about uh, some of the lo losses and in, in, in granularity of targeting that uh, the share talked about in his part of the, the, the program. But you know, I, I kind of look at it from a glass half full perspective. I um, I'm, I'm thinking that you know the, the tablet at traffic and and and, mo and mobile traffic for this client was only around 10% because it was a B2B vertical to begin with. It's not like you're searching for for you know. Windows programming software on your on your phone while you're out out and about, so uh, it was a small amount of traffic for the vertical, and we're looking into some other alternatives. So, like uh, one one alternative is is uh, maybe doing um, some Google Display Network uh, remarketing. Uh, so, so we're like trying to convert more of the traffic that we're already getting, and that of course supports device uh, segmentation, and and um, you know there's a lot of other interesting ideas that we were throwing around around like remarking lists and stuff like this and so this is the kind of stuff if, if you happen to be like one of the three or four percent of businesses that, that are having some issues with with uh, you know anything with enhanced campaigns so, like, that's why you, you should definitely uh, talk to uh, award stream and, and we can help you kind of think through some of the different alternatives uh, or strategies or, or workarounds because uh, you know we, we have some experience with that so um, so yeah that's uh, that concludes sort of my four uh, Four key takeaways of my presentation today. I tried to just pick three representative case studies uh, that kind of represent kind of learnings that I've acquired over the last two months from from upgrading roughly a hundred different campaigns, uh, or sorry, different accounts uh, with many many more campaigns. Uh, there was that vehicle part supplier who was kind of new to mobile and had no mobile strategy and was confused about the true value of mobile and was just blown away by the results. Uh, and, and by the way, that's like 96% of the the, uh, the SMBs out there that I that I work with that where they, they just didn't have a mobile strategy before because it was just too hard to, to implement. Uh, uh, so I think there's a lot of opportunity there for, for the vast majority of companies. Next, there was that national talent agency that already had a highly effective mobile strategy in place, but even still benefited from some of the campaign consolidation and simplification and, and as well as uh, additional advanced features and functions uh, that are offered in um, sort of the bidding strategies, et cetera. And finally, there was that Windows desktop software tool who's a little bit upset and we're trying to work on some alternatives there and um, you know, stay positive. And so basically, I hope these real world experiences will help you guide uh, you in uh, your own enhanced campaign upgrading journey. Uh, and so, uh, so thank you for, for listening here. And so um, that, that concludes my part of the, the, the talk here. And so I wanted to, to just ask a, a, a poll question here. Uh, Chris, are you still there? Yep, just launched it right now. Awesome. So yep. the, the poll question here is, uh, you know, would you like to start optimizing your paid search campaigns? And would you like to get a free live demo of the P WordStream PPC Advisor platform uh, you know, 
with one of our uh, certified AdWord reps that can not only uh, show you our tools and platforms and how we can optimize your your accounts and, and maybe mobilize your your uh, your business. Uh, we can also talk to talk to them about you know, challenges or, or strategy and all sorts of uh, you know review of, of your account to give you a sense for for what uh, what you might be missing out on or um, you know opportunities, low hanging fruit to improve on. Uh, this is a, it's a completely free offer, no obligation, but I think it's really valuable to to get the free consultation and the free demo to just to get a sense for how how um, you can take your, your PPC account to the next level. Um, so I'd like to add a, at this point, um, you know, we've, we've been working with WordStream as a partner for a very long time, and they really are at the forefront of, of, of what's going on in PPC as well as they are now uh, at the forefront of enhanced campaigns. They've uh, got a very, very close collaboration with, with Google, a lot of access to Google. We work very closely with them, I provide them with sneak peeks uh, where possible. Um, and I think this is a great opportunity for a lot of you out there to um, uh, to, to collaborate with one of our trusted partners um, and take advantage of the experience that uh, Larry uh, and his his entire organization has. Well, thanks, Cher. Thanks for that. Uh, and and also, I think Cher was telling me earlier that anyone who signs up for this offer will get granted one free wish from Google. <laughs> yeah. That's off the record. <laughs> All right, chair. Okay, so just kidding about that one, but uh, <laughs> but all the other stuff is true. Uh, all right, so uh, now that we uh, are, at, I, think, I think we should go to questions, uh, Chris. Uh, we can leave the poll open, but uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions for Google or myself, um, you can just type it in the, in the chat window on the bottom right side of your your screen there. And Chris, how are we doing for questions? Do we have any questions? Yep, we got some questions in here, and, and I'll leave that poll uh, poll question open right now. It looks like only 50% of people voted so far, so I'll, I'll leave that up while we go through Q&A here. Um, so the first question we have is, um, a lot of the examples used in the presentation were geared towards consumers. Will the new enhancements be beneficial for B2B companies as well? Uh, why don't you? Um, so this is Cher. Um, I think... The new, I think the new enhancements uh, through enhanced campaigns are going to be beneficial to uh, almost everybody using uh, using Google AdWords. Um, there's a good example that Larry uh, illustrated earlier as to where it might not be the, the best case scenario at the moment. Um, but um, in general, 9 out of 10, if not more, uh, companies would benefit from enhanced campaigns. And the reason behind it is uh, some of the advantages that we outlined. Um, Facilitation of campaign management, whether you're targeting consumers or B2B, um, the way you set up your campaigns, if it is much simpler than it used to be, then you're going to be benefiting regardless of who the ad text is trying to direct to. Um, other things like all the additional features that we outlined, the ability uh, to bid on location device, etc., cetera, um, at different times of day, um, the additional reporting features that we have, uh, they only they don't only support um, businesses that target consumers, but also B two B. Especially if you look at some of the new reporting features that we're going to be launching over the next couple of months and quarters, um, the ability to track downloads. I um, mean, you know, a lot a lot of a lot of B two B businesses don't sell something on their website, uh, but they may be more interested in in uh, generating leads and generating contact details through their website. Um, the ability to track a download of a demo or something as a conversion. The ability to um, uh, to, to track, uh, you know, downloading contact forms and things like that, um, that, that would greatly support uh, the B2B business as well. I just want to briefly talk to this question as well. So at WordStream, one of our values here is transparency. So I'm not going to recommend something uh, that, that uh, I myself wouldn't be willing to spend my money on here. And so WordStream, my business, is a, bit of, is a B2B company. So we sell software to other businesses. And we're using enhanced campaigns. Uh, like I tell you a little bit about how we're using enhanced campaigns. We have a call center, like a tele, uh, like a, a call center where we, we we take calls from from people, that, uh, uh, you know, who are interested in our software. And so so we were able to to reflect kind of like our hours, like nine to five, like in, into the um, into the uh, bidding strategy and into this ad scheduling strategy of our AdWords 
ads that we run to promote our B2B business. Uh, additionally, we were able to leverage uh, the uh, geo-specific bidding, like uh, bidding for, um, like we sell to different markets, English-speaking markets like Australia, New Zealand, Canada, UK, Australia, like Australia, New Zealand, USA, like South Africa. Like we, we were, we, we sell to all these markets, and and um, but but it was really a pain to have to create different geo-specific uh, campaigns for every possible, you know, uh, kind of English-speaking country. And so, you know, now it's like so much easier to, to well, all you have to do is create one campaign and create different geo-bid mo uh, modifiers uh, per, per country. And so that's, like, it's been a huge uh, improvement just for my B2B company, uh, WordStream, to, to, in terms of, like, campaign simplification, but also uh, taking advantage of features and functions that were just not available uh, before. So, so yeah, I think I think B two B companies, if you, as well, if you have a phone or like that, that you're trying to get to, to ring, uh, like most companies do, uh, I would be pretty excited about it. Great, thank you guys for being so detailed. Just to add to what Larry and Shane have to say, uh, just to add to that, I think it's also really uh, attractive to B two B customers because uh, even when you look at the display network perspective the changes that we brought about with respect to that, right? We've allowed a lot more granularity and control in terms of your targeting, like uh, in terms of placement targeting, topic targeting, you can bid adjust according to each of these options. So there's a lot more control that an advertiser has and therefore it could be even more attractive for a B2B customer. Okay, great. Um, the next question here, it kind of um, goes on the, the, the B2B question. The first question there is um, the enhanced campaigns removes control over specific device types. Um, what is your rec recommendation to optimize B2B for mobile? Um, for example, this person runs a lot of campaigns that require, you know, form submissions or, you know, um, the person has to view a, a complex demo. So what's your, um, your recommendations on how to, someone would go, um, B2B company would um, optimize for mobile? Uh, well, uh, it, it sounds like there's a lot of uh, specific user experience stuff they're talking about, like you have to view a video or fill out a form. And so uh, one one idea is to use the value track parameter, uh, which is, you can Google that. It's a, a, like a little parameter that you can include in your, your destination URL. And depending on whether or not the, uh, the click is coming from a mobile device or from a desktop device or a desktop computer, uh, you can maybe send them to different kind of landing page experiences. Uh, maybe maybe if they're coming from a mobile, then, then maybe it doesn't make sense to have like a really long and complicated form and maybe send them to, to a landing page that has like a, a number to call and, and directions to the office, for example, uh, and then uh, and vice versa. Like if, if, if um, they're coming from a desktop computer, well, then it's fine to have the, the, the longer form and, and maybe not you don't have to stress the, the, the numbers as much. Uh, well, what would you add uh, for optimization tips to share? Um, I think those were all very, very good tips. Um, it's not, not that easy to give very detailed tips because we don't have all the context here, but um, there's definitely uh, a lot of different features and solutions that enhance campaigns and compasses. We only outlined the, the main ones and the most significant ones. Um, but um, the ability to define the conversion that you're actually trying to drive, whether that's the same or different between devices, is something that needs to be thought about. Um, and then given that you can adjust bidding uh, on device level, uh, you, can, you can prioritize that, including location and time, uh, uh, in, into that equation as well. But I think this is a very good, uh, very good example of somebody who should definitely try and take up WordStream on, um, on the offer of their, uh, of their free demo. Um, somebody will be able to look into that account and have a conversation. Um, as to what the details are of, 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 of what the account is trying to achieve and what's feasible and what's not. Um, and I think there'll be a lot of value that can be added to one of those uh, conversations. Great. Thanks, guys. Uh, the next question here is, there's an automatic upgrade to enhance campaigns in July. Are there risks associated with letting my account auto-upgrade? And is there anyone who can help me manage the upgrade process or give advice? Uh, Yes, there is a little bit of risk uh, in terms of the auto upgrade process because Google doesn't know as much about your business as you know about your business. So the auto upgrade process is kind of a very basic algorithm that looks like there's like seven different use cases that, that what it looks at and it just 
kind of plows through the like if you have this, then it does this. Like, it doesn't really. It's not necessarily the smartest. Um, you know, uh, upgrade path for for your particular business. It's more like the lowest common denominator. And so, so yes, uh, I, I would highly recommend that you go look at that online poll question that's open there. And if you click the yes button for the for the free free demo and free assessment offer, uh, our our uh, you know AdWords certified reps could could walk walk you through kind of different considerations in terms of uh, you know what what you should be thinking about and 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 I would definitely recommend that you get in place and, and execute on your your mobile strategy or or your enhanced campaign strategy uh, before the the July twenty second uh, deadline because whatever we we come up together will be much more uh, intelligent than just the the brute force automatic auto upgrade process. Okay, great. We, uh, today we launched an upgrade center, uh, which will also help you make that change more effectively. So it basically helps you decide what account, what campaigns you need to merge and all of that. And you'll find that uh, when you get into your account, you'll find that in your campaign uh, on towards the left side, you'll see something that says upgrade center. So that might also help you. Great. Uh, the next question we have here is um, one of the attendees said, um, my take on mobile is that there's a lot of hype and attention, um, but the money still comes from desktop sales. So what would the value be for someone to use mobile advertising with AdWords? Um, so I, I, I can take that. Um, there's there's a lot of facts out there and a lot of figures out there that would um, that would suggest otherwise. Um, it always depends on what business you're in and, and what you're trying to achieve with your online campaigns. But um, I don't think there's any denying in the fact that um, there's a lot of mobile searches out there. Um, I think one in five searches has local intent now, um, and there's uh, a lot of other good reasons as to why Google is making this move. It's a, it's a bold move. Um, it's the biggest change in AdWords in, in the last five, six, seven years, um, and you know. The reason this is happening is because the way people are using devices is changing and has already changed, and that's not going to reverse. You know, there's not going to be less people using smartphones next year than there are now, and there's not going to be less people using tablets in a year than there are now. So whether you know if somebody themselves, an SMB owner themselves, is 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 um, you know on, on smartphones and tablets and all sorts of devices or not, shouldn't be a reflection of whether the consumers are. Um, and again, it depends on what you're trying to sell and what business you're in. But in general, um, there's a significant amount of search volume on mobile, um, and just not taking advantage of that is essentially allowing comp the competition and anybody else out there to to, to take advantage of that. So, so I think if the the question uh, uh, the caller has a legitimate uh, question about about like the, is mobile all hype? Uh, I think we saw in our poll question today that. You know, it's a it's it's legitimate. It, there was a, a it's a widely held view that uh, by in our own unscientific poll, by ten to one margin, people were thinking that uh, that the desktops is, is was more valuable than than the mobile clicks. Uh, but if you recall from my my uh, case study, that was also the view held by that that uh, first case study, the the car parts manufacturer. And so, you know, all I'm asking here is that you you just keep, keep an open mind and and actually. Try it out and try to figure out the value of mobile for your business. I mean, what you know, what what do you have to lose to just like the truth will set you free. It's like either it'll be worth more or less, and and, and as long as you set to put together a, a simple, you know, basic structured experiment process, kind of along the lines of what I um, what I described, uh, you can you can figure out exactly how much those mobile calls are worth, uh, and uh, and if 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 you're like this this. A use case like the the, uh, the information, like the knowledge of whether or not this thing was valuable, was com very, very important and significant for this particular business. So, so all I'm asking is just you know keep an open mind and and and, and you know let us help you uh, determine the value of that mobile for your business because it's different for every company. Okay. Uh, the next question we have here, we're actually getting a lot of questions. Um, from the audience today of um, people feeling a little overwhelmed about the new AdWords features. Um, so is there a feature or two out of all these new options that you suggest someone should start out with if they're not really PPC experts? 
So I think um, there's 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 a bunch of different features out there, and I understand um, and I fully appreciate that um, it's uh, it's quite complex. Um, the the theory behind it is that once you set up your campaigns and you take advantage of all these features and buttons and drop downs that exist, um, the campaign will uh, perform uh, better and be simpler to manage than before. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't take time uh, and effort to get them set up that way. I think some of the key things uh, to think about are um, time, place, and location. Um, so what time of day is most relevant for your business and then set bids according to that. Um, what locations are most relevant for you uh, and then set bids according to that. And um, think about whether mobile is more or less important. Um, and then not to forget to interplay those with each other. Some of the extensions are extremely valuable. Site links, I think 30% um, uplift in CTR versus not having site links is a, is a, is a very significant statement. Um, and any of the extensions that you can include, such as um, call extensions is one of, one of the key ones, would be, uh, would be fantastic. Um, my recommendation overall, though, is um, I mean, you have, uh, you have the, the poll question open now, and I'm just going to go back to it. There's, um, and I've met half of the team today. There's a bunch of extremely um, enthusiastic and knowledgeable uh, people sitting in the WordStream office in Larry's team. Um, these guys are giving you the opportunity to give them a call uh, and have a discussion on whether it's a specific enhanced campaign feature or WordStream PPC um, a conversation. Um, and, and, and you can take advantage of them. You know, use, their, use their knowledge, use their access to Google. Um, and, and don't be forced into a migration in July, um, or don't be you know, don't, don't 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 miss out on mobile or something like that just because um, it seems too complex. Take advantage of the free help that you're being offered. Awesome, thanks, Sure. Appreciate the kind words. Okay, um, I think we have time for one last question, and I I'd just like to thank everyone for sending your questions in today. We're we're getting a lot of questions here, so if we didn't get to your question, um, Larry likes to do um, a follow-up blog post after these webinars, so we'll try to answer as many of those questions in that blog post as we can. Um, but the last question we have here is, I'd like to try mobile ads, but I'm using automated bidding. Is there a risk my mobile spend will be really high, and how would you suggest getting started with mobile from a spend perspective? Well, there's definitely risk if you're using uh, some automated platform, either third party or even Google's automated bidding, uh, that 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 the um, that those out, those things won't be finely tuned for the new mobile stuff uh, compared to kind of how, how everything is all finely tuned for the old legacy kind of campaigns. I mean, even even Google conversion optimizer and this kind of stuff doesn't specifically work for um, for mobile bids, it's 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 all uh, it's all it's only going to be going forward. It's only going to work on your desktop bids, and you're you're uh, responsible for setting the mobile bid adjustment factors yourself. Um, so uh, you know what I would recommend is uh, then is to just uh, try it one campaign at a time, that rather than going all in. Like, could you try out mobile ads on? Um, you know your number two campaign, uh, like like your your second biggest campaign or something like that. But rather than going all in and then and doing uh, experiments on, on a smaller set and, and um, trying to learn and, and iterate and improve uh, in 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 that way. Uh, sure, do you, do you have any other things to that? I, I would just uh, underline what what Larry said. Um, our recommendation to all our um, partners and large clients that we work directly with is, you know, don't don't set a date. Uh, in stone and then decide to click the button for all your campaigns on one specific day regardless. Pick a campaign and start experimenting with it. This is new for not only for you guys but also for us. We, you know, we don't have the crystal ball and we don't know what's going to happen with every single campaign in the next couple of months. Um, it's very much um, learning, learning by doing here. Um, and picking your campaign, um, experimenting with the bid options um, and seeing, seeing how that performs. Not only in terms of a spend point of view, but especially in terms of a performance point of view. What's happening with the click rate? What's the conversion rate looking like? And you know, if 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 as in one of the examples that Larry outlined, the conversion rate is actually better um, than it is for desktop, then you know, boost the bids. Um, if the conversion rate is not better than for desktop, um, start optimizing and maybe lower the bids. Um, but I'm um, definitely step by step as opposed to all in. So Chris, can you advance the, the, the slide there and close the poll?
Okay, all set, Larry. Thanks, man. Awesome. So I think that's all the time we have for questions today. Uh, you know, thanks everyone for joining us today. Thanks, Horithika. Thanks, Cher from Google, uh, for for taking the time, and uh, thanks listeners for for joining us today. Um, that concludes our presentation today.